What's bad, YouTube? And welcome to a top 8 world's competitor, national champion, and creator in the sphere, very publicly walking away from competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! This is something I myself did several years ago. If it hasn't been obvious, I tried to keep up with the scene as best I can. I asked my audience a lot more on cards and what they're doing and why. Used to, I had all the answers. Lived with Billy Brake, who was also, even when not playing, keeping up, and he went to work for Konami. That took a lot of wind out of my sales, but then I just stopped resonating with cards. I did try with Eldritch as well as a bit Sprite and Cash Tier, but less and less the cards resonated with me, and there is that level of power creep to the game. And she brings up that that puts in a lot of RNG currently into this format, and so much would need to change besides just that. The Pricing is absolutely trash. That's something I have been talking about for a while, but she also brings up how terrible it is to go top eight at Worlds and walk away with practically nothing. And then you also get to the point that the Yu-Gi-Oh community can be a very rough and rowdy crowd. And we see terrible things here on this post right here. Like just people acting out of whack where they shouldn't be saying anything like this. And... Yeah, that's how it goes within this community, it feels like. More and more often, it gets checked. People do speak up a lot more than five years ago, but it is probably the roughest crowd out of all the TCG crowds. We're essentially the Smash Bros community of the fighting game community, as it were, if I were to draw any parallel. But then people argue which one's worse, and a lot of terrible things come out about both. But yeah, I would say we are pretty much the worst TCG community in terms of how we act there's so many good people here there's so many big hearts but it's also the crowd that seems to gather the most hateful and hatred stuff around and then she also said something that resonated with me she thought she would be one of the last players standing and i really thought that about myself back in the day i would be gray bearded at events older than jeff leonard really rocking it out there and i have just lost multiple points of interest with the competitive game other parts of the game really resonate with me how they're going and we'll get to that in a bit because the prize support there is actually better than the main events yet the stage it is played on is just absolutely trash at the moment so i want to say that she's not the only one quitting and if you're not familiar with her accolades i do suggest you actually browse through because second place this year at uk nationals it's not as if she fell off and she's just like mm, yeah oh, the game is going terrible for me she's quitting at the top of her game and choosing to do so. Christian Urena over here said, if the next prize card is another another verse vanilla monster, you can catch me playing another card game altogether. Now, I agree that it shouldn't be all for the money, but when you have a competitive scene with a company that at one time tried to market themselves before Master Duel as eSports on the world stage and pumped a million dollars into a world's show but you can't toss a little bone to the prizing i get where they're coming from when i won i walked away with over about five thousand dollars i want to say in prizing between how my impactful prize card actually worked the dell xps laptop the same one on big bang theory of all things i noticed it in the show one day when it was playing in the background at college and like just so much higher level of gaming prizes i got the tax slip and it was like $1,500 or $1,600 for that laptop. And now you get Nintendo Switches. I feel like when it comes to how pricing has gone, it's only devolved. And now we're talking about a thousand player regional sometime where it's rubber mats and deck boxes. Unless, you know, the shop wants to throw in, not Konami. The shops are who make pricing better. Epic and Gamer's Choice have done that, but they have to choose at their own loss to do that. It's not Konami supplying any extra pricing and they're putting it on the stores that are already struggling in the current environment to do so. And some of them are able to step up, but not all of them. So with this, I did have to clown just a little because two years ago, a lot of the pros had this to say. If you didn't win a prize card before don't complain about the new one it's not for you anyways i won one anciently i wasn't gonna win any of these and i would not have been excited to win 
any of these. I definitely would not. And a lot of players have been vocal about that. Jeff Jones as well has talked about how these vanilla prize cards have just gone downhill. And it just doesn't make sense to continue this line of prizing. They've taken away from the side events some really amazing prizing. Those giant starlight sheets. Not the little 4x4 four four ones. The giant rows and rows of starlights. You could do that with Quarter Century Secret Rare. Those got offers of 20 grand. And when they saw how it made the main event look... What did they do? Did they add it to the main event? No, they just took it away. That's something that would cost them like nothing just to go ahead and add to first place and maybe do something special for the whole top eight that would be minimal. Hey, print these extras off at the factory, put them up in our office, and we'll take them to the event. It's so simple to improve and add pricing. Uh, but we'll get to that in a second. Also, there's the price to the game currently that's being discussed by a lot of people. And I gotta say, this isn't new to history but i feel like could become one of the most expensive in a tier zero format of history places we could end up with how the extra deck is integral to Yu-Gi-Oh today versus you know back in the dark armed era where it was like six thousand dollars for a dad return specifically deck and then teledad was still very expensive i think we could end up being in the second most expensive format ever passing necros and all the other expensive formats depending how it goes so let's go ahead and talk on points i actually want to add on top of the great ones that jess already brought in uh for my point zero actually is record attendance isn't really indicative of how the local scenes and true health of the game are when they've been slowing down on events in general to get more people to play ex in the eu and upcoming there's two in california which is kind of the largest area for attendance on ycs's and shonen jumps historically i also wanted to add that there's no great gateway into the game right now we have master duel which was amazing that it debuted in the fashion it did it got a lot of returning players back into the game it even got some new players back in the vtuber community's taken off with it but since that there's not really been anything to get more new players in. And Master Duel, it's, it's been out for a while. And it feels like people become more disillusioned with the cards like this on screen that are going to come to their format. Even though their formats shape up differently, they definitely start dooming a lot more about the cards they're going to have to be playing with again, especially when they're TCG players, which a lot of the top players are like Trisha LaTV, Jesse Cotton, doing good at both sides of the game so it comes down in my opinion to some of these things on top of what jess brought up product structure and how the tcg is the cash cow versus the ocg i actually have notes by the way is why i'm going to look up i wanted to make sure to get the wording down but really we are the cash cow here in the tcg where ocg product structure is so amazing to compete with all the other card games and it just looks so appealing over there they have different rarity structures for cards and it would work over here they've proven it would work until they drug 25th century cards down into the ground the product structure makes it incredibly hard for people to enter the game in the tcg yet our competition here is ramping up similar to the ocg now lorcana has the disney money they have these different structures of prize cards to top cut that are going for thousands of dollars it seems like they get what we've been asking for for years from day one about prizing structures and doing little extra special things for their community and player base it's really odd how that can actually be versus us begging and begging for years on end for regional prize cards or for you to do something different with the main prize cards don't do these vanillas do maybe meta cards and special arts that never get released again or different kind of collectibles at least no it's not gotten by ours but certainly by different card games that have come in Yu-Gi-Oh definitely needs to wake up to the fact that the competition is here in the tcg areas though like christian urena is probably direct referencing Lorcana by how his activity has been around the card games I also want to say there's too many products because too many of the products fail we've talked about this with Ruxin we've talked about this in general but the product release has had so many failures that a ton of stores stopped carrying Yu-Gi-Oh and that local scenes around that dried up because they're not buying selling singles or even firing tournaments 
Strike Zone is the most famous example of a card store really storied in the community, would always buy the high-end stuff, and they've quit Yu-Gi-Oh! singles and Yu-Gi-Oh! It's crazy to me. Yes, they have new competition like game guys over in Houston that are hosting the regionals, but that's not the only reason. Like, it comes down to the fact that they were deep in the singles and really ahead of everybody for their time and here it's gone. They they just don't want to carry Yu-Gi-Oh anymore. And a lot of shops are like that. We saw so many shops between 2021 and 2022. When the flagship product like the Megatons fail over and over, they're not going to keep buying those massive orders to get orders of the good stuff when more products are failing than winning and not selling off their shelves or having any demand. Uh, there's also the implementation of alternate formats. That's personally what I'd like to be playing. I like Goat a lot. Uh, Edison is king right now, which is fine, but it's relegated to side events. You had the 400 players playing for a giant card and two medium cards, which all the medium cards in the EU, as far as I'm aware, are mostly foil unless there's an error at the factory. And so ours are less impressive than over there here in the US. But point being, uh, that giant substitute sold for 6,500. I would rather win that than win a Weiss, yes. I like giant cards. I'm an addict, but like just logically... It looks more attractive to win a 400-man Edison event than a 2,500-person YCS. And that's just the going market of special oddities in Yu-Gi-Oh! that could be implemented to the main event. Imagine, you know, the, the top three get a giant card, a foil oversized, and a regular oversized of whatever first place gets to pick. That would be so cool in before Arneos and that's why they can't do it or something stupid. But no, seriously, they could pick any art of blue eyes. They could do something super special that doesn't exist as a giant card. And it could be that it gets retired after that event. That choice is crossed off a list or something like that. So it can't just be replicated and somebody has to go for something different. My point being, it's so easy for Konami to just tap in and do things with connections they're already doing. And it truly does feel like they don't care about the player base. Uh, when it comes to speed duels, they're ending speed duels. They ended it early in the EU. They didn't even keep distributing over there. Where was it relegated? Side events with giant cards. So what's going to happen with Rush Duel? Seriously, when you bring Rush Duel over, is it going to get its own events? Probably not. Are they going to be confident enough to do that? Probably not. If we get another alternate format, what are they going to do? Let it die inside events like every single alternate format ever has, despite the surging efforts of the community to do so. It truly does not feel like they care to lessen to any of the player base. It is so frustrating at the end of the day that you can give out all this endless advice to them, and it's, well... The dollars say a little different, and we're going to head this direction. I do think the term irreparable damage is incoming is pretty accurate. And then uh, the main content and the main way people enjoy Yu-Gi-Oh! Have you looked around Yu-Gi-Oh! YouTube? When I started, I actually hadn't. I, my head was only in the competitive sphere. The main way people play Yu-Gi-Oh! now is made-up formats. Yeah, that's pretty much it. You look at DZ, Simo, Farfa, Nimnim, -Nim, formats with constructed rules that are an escapism from real Yu-Gi-Oh. People are loving this game, loving how it's built, love the mechanics, but they don't love the current thing. And that's what Jess also said. She's quitting competitive Yu-Gi-Oh. The main way people are enjoying this game is not as the game is built to be played. And that should shout something to Konami about all these alternate formats that are gaining traction and they're just letting it slip through their fingers. I feel when it comes down to it, the ship isn't going to write course in time and will only do so reactively despite so many games not carrying Yu-Gi-Oh! despite so many local scenes drying up they probably feel like they can recapture it at worst it's really sad to actually see Speed Duel die I buy a lot of the giant cards I try to support that scene as often as possible and give really good offers to the players that win those cards I really enjoy them too I have the Gate Guardian set and many others from Speed Duels and uh, even though I very casually played the game for a little bit with Speed Duels and the format's not for me, I think they were doing something kind of cool on the side, but it was not. 
enough. And it's not enough to justify the product. It's not enough for the main game to justify the product. And something's got to change. I've mentioned tons of ways within the confines of no money. Because it's very obvious we're never going to get money with Yu-Gi-Oh! But they can do some very simple things with the Yu-Gi-Oh! community that dials it up with the greatest of ease. Thanks for watching, everybody.